Want to attend the legendary Thrive Time Show Business Workshop for free? Subscribe on iTunes, leave an objective review, and send us confirmation at info at thrivetimeshow.com to claim your tickets. Want to live in a van down by the river? Come by and see us at our Riverwalk offices and we'll be able to make your dreams come true. Yes, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio and podcast download. My name is Clay Clark, I'm the father of five incredible humans. And uh, my wife is just a, a gorgeous, wonderful lady, and, and uh, I'm a man bear pig, you know. And so I I've won the game of life. I got a great wife, uh, great businesses, and the trade off. You see the trade off of that. This is this is the trade off. The, tra- the, the the thing. It's the it's the trade off. No one wants to talk about the trade off, but the trade off mm-hmm. is the thing. See, I had to get up this morning at three in the morning. You see, so I, what I did is I got up at three in the morning so that I could end my day at two p.m. You know, bam. And the reason why uh, I have a great wife is because um, I trick her into staying married to me every day. But well, it's, it's good it's, it's that she can see as well. That helps. Yeah, well, because Z is such a nice guy. A partner. He refuses. <laughs> he refuses to give her the correct uh, diagnosis. He gives her the opposite glasses. prescription. <laughs> so she might be seeing 2020. He'll say, let me give you those 2100 contacts and mm. see. No, but seriously, it's a process that you must go through. If you're going to be a successful entrepreneur of embracing the trade-offs, you see, freedom isn't free. And you see, check, check this out. This is huge. If those who cannot self-discipline themselves must be disciplined from the market, from the legal system, from the mortgage company, from the boss. From the boss. These are all things that happen. And so, Jeff, we have a question that was asked from a thriver. And I want to tell everybody what we're going to be talking about here. But I want to make sure you're getting this. No matter what we're teaching you to do, if you don't do it, it won't work. Nothing works unless you do, to quote Maya Angelou. That's so true. Nothing works unless you do, to quote Maya Angelou. That's the best-selling poet, uh, author. Now, Chip, what are we talking about? We're going to be talking about how to create an employee experience that inspires and retains quality employees. Okay, I'm going to walk you through the steps big news, big of news. how to do this. And this is, this, is, this is big, but I want to make sure that everybody listening to the show here, that you would take notes on this because if, if you don't, we're going to lose here. I'm going to read the notable quotables, and Chup's going to break down what to do with it, okay? Reed Hoffman, this is the founder of LinkedIn, one of the founding partners of PayPal and uh, the venture capitalist partner behind Greylock Partners, writes, one of the challenges of running a startup is solving critical short-term problems without neglecting long-term ones. Recruiting is a long-term problem. It's almost never the answer to the problem of the month. Clearly, you need to have the right talent on board, but it's not like to solve the key problems your business is facing right now. Yet the longer you wait to do the long-term things, hire good people, the more likely it is that you're going to die from something that requires a longer time frame to be solved. Chubb, you've got to constantly interview. Why do you have to constantly be recruiting people forever? If you're not constantly interviewing, you that you know, A employee, that unicorn employee, that person that you've been looking for for years possibly... If you're not hiring the week that they get fed up with their boss or whatever reason they decide to move on, they're not going to find you. You're not going to find them. Then you have to schedule, step two, schedule a weekly time for your team meeting with your team. Right. You got to have a weekly meeting with your team. You got to, for your weekly level 10 meeting, it's called a level 10 meeting. It's taught from Gino Wickman's book called. Uh, Attraction. He calls it the EOS, the Entrepreneur's Operating System. This is how you do it. I'm going to tell you how to do the meeting, okay? So this is what you do. What you do is you say, one, we start the meeting on time. That's a big one. Then you report. Everyone has to report what they did because everyone's held accountable and everyone has to be in the meeting. You can't do it via email. I got a question for yes. on this. Okay. What if you got somebody out there and maybe that all of their staff doesn't work every single day, Clay? Make them all work on oh, that one say same day. Say it again. What do you make do? Make them all work on that one <laughs> same day. Make Gotta them. make it happen. Uh, I pay, just so you know, we have a Thrive Coaches meeting every day at 6 a.m. And everyone who's there, last time I checked, gets paychecks. So I thought about it with Vanessa because we've thought about this. And we, we, on average, it costs me about $1,000 to do that meeting that I do every day. That's $4,000 a week I spend on training the team. Right. Hmm. That's the team you need to train. Right. So so then reporting. you got to hold people accountable for their numbers every week. Okay, so start on time. Hold the team accountable. Third, you want to identify problems. Fourth, discuss the problems. This is all in the show notes, by the way. You discuss the problems. Five, you solve the problems. Then you assign the to-do list. So who needs to do it? What needs to be done? And when is the action item supposed to be done? Now, this is the part where people get it twisted. You don't 
ever talk to your teammates again during the rest of the week because they now know what to do. They know who needs to do it, and you don't see them again until the next week. i got to jump in right here as well. I'm going to keep jumping. It's like a trampoline in here. Jumping, jumping. Make you want to jump. Jump. Oh, Chup makes Chup you want to. Chup make you want to. Jump. 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 Oh. Okay. When you're running this meeting, you cannot wait a day or two or whatever to put these items on the uh, to-do list. You've got to take these action items and either assign to somebody to put them on that to-do list immediately or do it yourself immediately. Do not let this drift because the next thing you know, it's four days past the meeting. It hasn't gone on anybody's to-do list and it's not going to get done. So you bring all your team together at one time. Everybody. 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 Yeah. You bring them to that meeting. Then you hold them accountable and you assign the items in that meeting and you say, I'm not going to speak to you again. Not at all until next week. So are there any questions you have that would prevent you from getting this done? They have ample opportunity to do that then, but they cannot call you after that because if they did need to call you, then you would have to micromanage them, which would cause you to be insane over time. So what you want to do is people that do need to be micromanaged, you do need to micromanage them until you can replace the face. So now the notable quotable from Elon Musk. He says, I find it remarkable that I can explain the reality of a situation to people and still not change their point of view. The facts are very plain, and the reasoning is very clear, but they still won't agree with the conclusion. It's crazy. Rather than learn from their experiences, they choose instead to engage in wishful thinking. Perhaps it's more comfortable than reality, but I think that wishful thinking is one of the most profound human failings, the major reason that people adhere so strongly to wrong ideas. This doesn't mean that you can't be optimistic. You simply have to be realistic as well. This is the guy who built PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, Solar City. He just is saying, if you have the meeting next week and they didn't get the action item done, you would say, okay, so you, I would say this in a meeting. This is, this is, I, I say these things. I would say, okay, so you didn't do the item. Okay. Last week, did you, did you, you knew what to do, right? Okay, cool. All right. And that's what I would say. And then the silence would be deafening. And then as soon as the meeting's over, I pull them aside, usually when it's myself and one other person. If it's a female, it's always me and someone else. If right. it's a dude, it'll be, you know, me directly. And I said, here's the deal. Uh, you didn't do your action item. And there's really, there's like a few excuses that I don't tolerate. And one is saying I didn't know what to do. Two is saying there was a miscommunication. Uh-huh. And three was saying I forgot. And so henceforth, that can't happen anymore. And so what happens is you just follow up. And those uncomfortable conversations are what drives the growth. And over time, people don't want to have the uncomfortable conversations. And so they begin to do what's needed. And so Tony Shea with Zappos chimes in. He writes, being successful is just about doing whatever it takes to get stuff done. In the early days of Zappos, we, not he, we did everything. If we had 100 orders that needed to go out, everybody stayed late at night packing boxes and chipping in. This is true for all of us, not just for me. People get that wrong so many times I see working with different clients is that they're the ones whose schedule's just getting torn apart. Because You're the owner working your butt off. Right. You tell them, hey, if you want this job, you have to do what it takes. And if you don't want to do it, then you don't work here. Exactly. So then you got to schedule time in your calendar, a different meeting than this meeting. This is a different meeting. This is a second meeting. Oh, my gosh. And every week you schedule a meeting to te- teach your team how life works. So you actually have to motivate and inspire the people. John Maxwell chimes in. He writes, the heart comes before the head. John Maxwell, the leadership expert, the author of 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, he writes, the heart comes before the head. I would say management today is mentorship. You must invest the best of yourself in training your team of people. People have to know that you really do care about them or they're not going to care about doing their jobs correctly. So I don't care how much they know what to do. If they don't feel like you sincerely give a crap, then they won't do it. So what you have to do, Home Skillet, is you've got to schedule a time to meet with the people, to hold them accountable. That's meeting number one. Meeting number two, though, is to motivate. And let me tell you what. Sometimes you have to have a motivational meeting when you're not motivated yourself. True. And if your team's not motivated, it will transfer through to the customer. I just want to let you know, they will pick up on that. So here's the deal. Chup, you see me each week do those meetings every day at 6 a.m.? Yeah. Can you talk about those meetings and what that looks like for people that maybe have not been to our meetings? Well, first of all, it's every day, right? It's it's consistent. Every day. We go over any questions that we have for any clients so that it's a learning opportunity for everyone. You don't have to repeat yourself. What time do I show up for that meeting? Right as it starts. You notice I'm right as it starts or like, right after? Like right as it starts, yeah. I do on purpose because I don't want to see anybody before that meeting. Yeah. Because I want the meeting to get started with John. 
and I want to come in with a blasty blast of Phantasmagoria. And I don't right. want any negativity getting on me. No negative waves, baby. And then I can't peace happen. out. Can't happen. He's ready. On to the day. So that's how it works. You got to do it. So, Chuck, for somebody out there who's saying, I cannot find the time to shoot this video on my website for you know recruiting new people. I can't find the time to have the weekly training meeting. I can't find the time to hold my team accountable. I can't find time for these two meetings. What would you say? Start saying no to things that don't matter. If it's not one of your F6 goals, if it doesn't help you make more money, if it doesn't help grow the business, put it through that filter. You've got to say no to it if you're passionate about your business. You know, Eric Chupp, business coach, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I like to end the show with a three. What? And a two. And a one. Then I put the little boom after it. Oh, okay. So are you ready to do it? I'm ready. Here we go. Three, three two, two, one, boom! boom.